to the stage, CEO at Redgate Software, Jakob Lamek. Hello everyone, it's an absolute pleasure to be here and welcome you all. Whenever you're joining through the live stream or in person, welcome to 2023 PASS Data Community Summit. It's great to be here in Seattle. This year's theme, Connect, Share and Learn, sums what this community and this conference is all about. It also reflects one of the biggest trends we at Redgate have observed in our State of the Database Landscape report. Skill shortage and limited access to knowledge base is holding our community, our teams back from implementing the best database practices. But I'm sure that this week is gonna go a long way to supporting your goals. My goal last year was to deliver day two Redgate keynote from this very stage with my colleagues. It's been an incredible experience. I've been told it went really well, but somehow I wasn't invited to do it this year. <laughs> Nevertheless, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to hear more today from Shirish Tota and Microsoft engineering team about their plans for Azure platform and AI-ready applications. I'm also excited to hear, even though I wasn't invited to present on the day two Redgate keynote, about our plans for end-to-end -end database DevOps solutions. It's gonna be interesting to hear from members of the Postgres community about their plans, Postgres 16, managing multiple databases, AI. And lastly, I'm looking forward to the Friday keynote about AI and ChatGPT. In fact, I've asked ChatGPT to write most of this intro, and it has been the best $20 per month I spent in my life. Thank you, Microsoft. Thank you. In 2023, PASS Summit is better than ever, and at Redgate, we are incredibly proud to host such a fantastic event for and by the community. This year, we're bringing participants from over 44 countries. So please take your time and connect, peers, connect with peers from all around the world and enjoy our program. We have prepared five themed tracks, 232 sessions of sharing and learning delivered by 231 speakers. And I'd like to thank all the speakers and everyone else who made those sessions possible. Now, this year's pass is largely about in-person experience, and it was fantastic to see so many of you at the last night welcome drinks. We'll have a number of other community and pre-conference events going throughout the week, and those are a huge opportunity to connect with your friends, with your peers, but also those who you may meet for the first time. In fact, I would like to give a very, very warm welcome to over 43% of us who are at the PASS Summit for the first time this year. Now, I would also like to call out the Community Zone. This is a well-loved hub within the conference that for this year has refreshed and revamped program. It is located in the Skybridge area and is created for and by the community. But it wouldn't be possible without those members of community who take their time to run it. So big, big, big thank you. I would also like to thank all of our sponsors, including Microsoft and Intel, our premier sponsors, 
AWS, our platinum sponsor, and Pure Storage, our gold sponsor. I'd also like to thank DataVail, who is returning for the second year as a sponsor, and I'd like to thank all the exhibitors, including those who are with us for the first time, Postgres USA and the Beaver. Thank you all for your support. Now, we are e here for a great few days. There is so much to do, there is so much to see, there is so much to learn, but it can become incredibly busy at times. If you haven't already done so, you can create your personalized agenda online. To do so, please download the Pass Summit app, enable notifications. And if you miss anything, the sessions will be available on demand after the show. And as always, please give us your feedback, either through the Pass Summit app, QR codes, or posts located across the conference. It helps us to run great events, but it helps also everyone, including myself, to improve. So there is a hope I'll be allowed to do the keynote one more time again. Now, we want to make PASS as inclusive, as welcoming, and as enjoyable as possible. So I'd like to remind you about the code of conduct. There is a QR code located at the back of your badge. And if you need any help, please speak to the members of the PASS Summit team. Now, before I hand over to Shirish Tota and Microsoft team, I have one more announcement to make. 2024 PASS Data Community Summit will take place between 4th and the 8th of November here in Seattle. So please, save the day and stay tuned for more details and when the tickets will become available. Thank you, have a fantastic pass, and over to, to, over to VP of Azure Databases, Shirish Tata. What's this? Hello? Yo, hey, Shirish. Hey, Shirish. How's it going? Hey, Shirish, it's almost time for your big moment. Now, I know you know a lot about SQL, we all know that, but you've never done this past keynote thing before, and we want to make sure you are really ready. Yeah, and like, you need to wear like a black t-shirt, and do you know how you're going to introduce yourself? Oh, I was just thinking to be myself, and maybe just say, hello, I'm Shirish. Yeah, no, 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 no. First, don't listen to Adam. Don't wear a black t-shirt. And you got to say something that's more memorable. How about this? Yo! Yo! All right, Shirish. Give it a try. Yo! 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 No, that really doesn't sound like me. I'm not going to do that. Okay, let's talk details. Will you be doing vocal warm-ups? Are you ready to code on the fly? Have you ironed your black t-shirt yet? Anna, that's all well and good, but we know what everybody wants. They want sports. Yeah, we know you're a really big cricket fan, so we got you a little something. Check under your desk. Desk? Ooh, what is this? Is it a cricket bat for toddlers? You want me to bring this to the stage? Yeah, it can be your new thing. And don't wear the black t-shirt. Look, everyone, I really appreciate you trying to help me. I know SQL, I know this community. I got this, I'll do it in my way. No, wait, 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 no, no wait. Well, it's time to get on the stage now. I'm really glad I got my lucky charm. Please welcome to the stage, Vice President of Azure Databases, Sharice Doda. All right, thank you. Uh, well, now that we've talked about cricket, we'll talk about my second most favorite topic, Azure databases. Before I go there, though, I want to introduce myself. This is the first time for me doing here. Uh, I am Shirish Tota. I'd like to ask you a question. How many of you know where I've started my career? Well, I was an intern, and the first product that I worked on was Yukon. And how many of you have heard about Yukon? Woo! Woo! Well, you should be proud if you've known Yukon. Now, I went on to contribute to features across Katmai, Kilimanjaro, Denali, and so on and so forth. I was also the early crew that brought SQL Server into cloud. Uh, I was developer number zero for Cosmos DB. I built query engine, inverter index, et cetera, in Cosmos DB. I did a small hiatus at, uh, at a startup, and I'm back now at Microsoft running all operational databases. So it's an honor for me to be here and presenting to you and presenting to this community, our community here. So thank you. Let's dive in. 
Well, so the world around us is absolutely changing. We all know we are at an inflection point with AI. Intelligence, real-time capabilities, gen AI applications are all over the place. They are changing the world at an amazing speed. And of course, you know, with this comes potential opportunities, and all our customers want to exploit them. To do that, though, to channel this limitless potential into limitless growth, you need the right tools. And that's where we come in. SQL Server and Azure databases can provide you abilities to build intelligent, limitless, and trusted solutions in a cost-effective way so you get to where you need to grow. SQL Server leads with amazing performance, and Azure databases can give you a great flexibility in terms of performance, availability, and whatnot. Right? Build or access data no matter what you need. You get great availability, flexibility in languages, frameworks, technologies, and you can deal with any types and data of any size, petabytes and beyond. I tell you what, SQL Server and Azure SQL databases, they can help you channel this limitless potential into limitless growth. In this keynote, I'm going to show you how. But before I go, though, and talk a lot more about the technology databases and Azure data, I want to acknowledge that technology is one aspect of this growth. Community is another critical piece. This event, this community, and events like PASS help us collaborate with each other, make lifelong connections with our peers, grow our expertise and potentials, and make sure that we rely on each other for all the encouragement that we get from this community. Whether in person or virtual, Azure Data Community has kept the conversation going. Everything about data, SQL Server, Azure databases, and whatnot. And today, we are 155,000 members. We have 172 plus user groups and operate across 44 different nations. And you know, I really want to thank you all for this. Now, of course, when such a community, user group, and customers speak, we listen. Right? Just over the last year, we've delivered a significant number of features across our portfolio of Azure databases based on the feedback that we've heard from you. Thank you. Thank you for helping us get better, giving us crucial feedback, keeping us on our toes, and making sure that you support us all through our years. Now, speaking of years, I want to take us a, a little trip back in time with SQL Server. How many of you have seen this? This is SQL 1. All right, any hands? OK, a few. <laughs> SQL 95. All right. <laughs> Hydra. Sphinx. Shiloh. Yukon. And this is where my professional career has begun. Right? Katmai, and so on and so forth. We can keep going, SQL Azure, then we keep delivering it. Well, so I'm not walking through this memory lane just to make you feel older or make myself feel older. <laughs> right? I'm sure, just like me, all your professional careers have also intertwined with this timeline. I owe a lot of my professional career because of that timeline, because of all that engineering work that has happened, because of all the feedback and investments that you have invested. So this whole retrospective, although, is to honor a milestone birthday. SQL Server is turning 30 this year on Windows NT. Let me repeat it. SQL Server is turning 30 years, three decades. Well, to celebrate that, we have an amazing reception tonight from 6 to 8 at our exhibition booth. I would really love for all of you to join us and there will be a photo booth. You could join in. You can take uh, pictures from your favorite SQL icons. There will be a lot of birthday props. Really hope that you join us. So with that, you know, I want to look into what's happening in the world of SQL Server, Azure SQL, and whatnot. And to go deeper into that, I'm going to invite VP of all SQL products, Asad Khan. Thank you, Sirish. And I'm really excited to be here with a community that is as passionate about SQL as I am. So let's, let's dive right in. What really set the SQL family apart from other operational databases is that it is all built on the same SQL engine, whether you run it at the edge or in the cloud. 
On top of that, Azure enables flexible options for application migration, modernization, and development. No matter how you deploy it, you get the same consistent experience with all the tools and languages you know and you love. Last year, we announced SQL Server 2022 right here at PASS Summit. SQL Server delivered the link capability that enables you to connect any SQL Server running anywhere, even in other clouds, to Azure SQL Managed Instance, providing unprecedented hybrid flexibility and database mobility. It provided analytics over all your data and deep integration with, with S3 storage. It brought the Microsoft purview that helps you catalog all your data. It gave you the blockchain, which is the temper-proof capability with Ledger. And for performance, we brought some key capabilities. And for customers with high-end needs around maintaining customer workloads, there is Intel Quick Assist backup compression for hardware acceleration and CPU offload capabilities. I am really excited to share that to this date, SQL Server is our fastest adopted version of SQL Server. SQL 2022 is growing at double digit for both on Windows as well as Linux on Linux platforms. And some of the most loved features, as we see from the actual usage of the customers, is intelligent query processing, which automatically improves your query performance. SQL Ledger, it has empowered organizations to work in non-trusted environments. The hybrid capabilities, such as the SQL MI link, TempDB ledging, uh, latching, which removes the final latch contention, contained AGs and the new T-SQL enhancements that we led in SQL 2022. So I want to thank you for your support and your feedback in making SQL Server 2022 such a successful release for Microsoft. Thank you. In addition to SQL Server, one of the key innovation we have delivered in the last 12 months is Azure Arc for SQL Server. Whether your data is on premises, on other clouds, or at the edge, Azure Arc extends cloud services to your data state, delivering innovation to where your data resides. Using Arc, we are bringing more Azure data manageability to SQL Server that is running outside of Azure. The three key capabilities that every customer care most about is management, governance, and security. And Azure Arc deliver all these three. Through Arc, you can manage your entire SQL state. It gives you a unified view of all SQL servers in a central portal to bring and manage the inventory and licenses. For, go for governance, we enable Microsoft Purview which provides you the access policies so customer can control and govern their entire data state and then generate business insights from that. For security, customers can use Microsoft Defender to provide threat protection for SQL Server and single sign-on with Entra ID, also known as AAD. These are Azure security capabilities that customers have wanted on-premises for a long time. All these features are available today, and we will bring more cloud manageability to SQL Server through Azure Arc in the near future. On that note, let's look at some of the new capabilities that will further improve the hybrid capabilities for SQL. Imagine a single pane of glass to monitor all your SQL state from ground to cloud and running on the edge as well. Today, we are launching a new monitoring feature for Arc. It allows DBAs and developers to switch from a reactive operation to more of a proactive one. It will empower them to optimize for database performance and diagnose problem faster. This feature is now in preview. We are also announcing the preview of enhanced high availability and disaster recovery enabled by Azure Arc, which helps you improve SQL Server business continuity and consistency. It lets you view and manage 
always on availability group, failover cluster instances, and backup directly from the Azure portal. I'm also pleased to announce the extended security updates for SQL Server enabled by Arc. And now you can manage all your security patches from the Azure portal as well. Let's look at how customers are using uh, taking advantage of some of these capabilities. World Bank, a well-known international financial institution that provides loans and grants to governments of low and mi middle income countries, their IT teams were struggling to manage the hybrid environment because their SQL servers spans from cloud to, uh, from, from cloud to edge and deployed all over the world. Azure Arc has helped alleviate that bottleneck by offering a single pane of glass to give a single unified view over all their services. What is more interesting is that Arc helped the World Bank to streamline their cloud migration journey when they were ready to move to the cloud. So uh, we have covered what's new for hybrid environment, but let's not forget about Azure, Azure SQL database services. Azure SQL is a family of fully managed, secure and intelligent SQL database services that offer the widest range of deployment options. With Azure SQL, you can rehost SQL workload running on SQL Server on Azure VMs. You can migrate and modernize your applications on SQL Managed Instance. And you can build cloud-native applications on SQL DB. We will cover this, the, new, the new options on, for building cloud-native applications later in this presentation. Let's right now look at what are the new capabilities that we are offering on SQL Managed Instance. SQL Managed Instance is a key destination for customers looking for easy migration and modernization. Last year, we delivered a long list of features that came and made available on SQL Managed Instance. It included features like instance start and stop to save cost, zone redundancy for better availability, distributed transaction coordinator, or DTC, which allows developer to run transaction across multiple databases, and I'm happy to announce that today all of these features are generally available. This is a bundle of features that make SQL Managed Instance even more performant, reliable, and secure. Plus, these features make even deeper integration through their hybrid features for on-prem SQL Server customers. In addition, we have exciting new features coming to SQL Managed Instance such as the free offer for SQL Managed Instance that gives you 12 months of free usage of SQL Managed Instance. This has been a long-standing ask. And this feature will be available soon. And, and as part of that capability, we will give you 12 months of free up to eight V cores with 64 gigabytes of storage. With that, I am excited uh, to invite uh, Principal Lead Program Manager Vladimir on stage so you can see some of these updates in action. Thanks, Asad. I'm really excited to be here with you today. So I want to start with a question to you all. Who's looking to modernize their SQL applications to the cloud? Show hands. A lot of you, many of you. So if you're looking to modernize your applications to the cloud, there's going to be four steps on your journey. First one is going to be to evaluate the cloud for your application. Then the second step is to optimize your cloud configuration to meet your app requirements. Then you want to mi migrate your application to the cloud. And finally, you want to modernize your app using the power of the cloud. Now, this entire journey could take months. But I want to show you today a very time compressed view of what can be done and how easy it is to do with Azure SQL Managed Instance, or SQLMI for short. So first off, I want to introduce our demo app today. It's a mission critical app, as most sales apps are, and it needs to be highly available. That means I have a secondary replica on a standby server in the same data center, and I also have a disaster recovery set up in another data center. My app also needs to be highly performant, so I'm using a big box to run this on premises. The first part of our journey is going to be to evaluate SQL Managed Instance for my application. 
I can use one of the sample apps provided. And once I've learned about the service, the next thing I want to do, I want to create a replica of my database using the link feature and evaluate SQL and my with my own data. Let me show you how this looks in Azure Portal. I'm now connected to a general purpose managed instance, which is my demo instance. And the general purpose service tier is a great place to start your journey. Now, the November 22 feature wave, which has recently released for production subscriptions, makes the evaluation very easy and cost effective. First, it offers fast instance creation, but it also offers a way for you to start and stop your instance as per your own needs. You can create a custom schedule over here, and then that schedule allows you to save on costs. In addition to that, the free offer is coming soon, which is going to make it even easier to evaluate SQL MI, offering you 12 months of evaluation totally free of charge. So now that I've learned about SQL MI, what I want to do next is I want to bring in my own data. And we're going to go to everybody's favorite tool, SQL Server Management Studio. So as you can see, I'm now connected to my SQL Server instance with my database on it. And I'm also connected to my managed instance with no databases. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start the wizard to create the link between the two. New link, paste the name. Next, I will specify the secondary instance, which is my SQL MI. Authentication, simple stuff, next. And now when the wizard completes, we're going to click refresh. And now I have a database running on SQL MI, which is fully synchronized. This allows me to complete my evaluation using my own data, which brings us to step two of our journey. So we now need to land on an optimal configuration for our application. Now, general purpose service tier is a great place to start your journey in SQL MI. And it, it's optimal for most and um, very, very large portion of the workloads. It has state-of-the-art features like high availability, geo redundancy, and many others. But given that we need blazing fast performance for this application, we're going to consider business critical tier as well. Business critical is arguably the fastest SQL Server's database service because it's the only one that uses locally attached SSDs, giving it the best possible performance. In addition to this, it comes with a free readable replica, allowing you to scale out your analytic workloads. And the readable replica is free of charge. It's, it's included in price. So now what we're going to do is we're going to adjust our configuration to business critical. And back to the Azure portal, this will only take a couple of clicks. It's really easy to do. I'm going to go to the compute and storage panel over here. Then I'm going to choose business critical. And I'm also going to choose zone redundancy. And this will make my app more resilient to a broader class of outages. Now, all I need to do is click Apply. And this will start an automated process, which is fully online, that gets me on my target configuration. And this ability to easily adjust your configuration with just a couple of clicks in a fully online way is one of the major advantages of running SQL Server in the cloud. This gives us the following picture. So we have the link established, and SQL Manage Instance is now our secondary. We can keep running like this, and I can use my SQL Manage Instance as the scale-out solution for my analytics, or I can use it for disaster recovery. Uh, but the, 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 we, can go full, uh, we can go all the way and migrate our application to Manage Instance. And what, the, what has to happen now is we need to briefly stop our sales app. Then we will flip the link direction and make SQL MI the primary. And finally, we will reconnect our application to the new primary, which is now in the cloud. Uh, we're going to go back to SQL Management Studio, and I'm going to show you how easy this is. All I need to do is go to my database, choose to fail over the link. I'm going to choose a planned failover, click Next. Log in, provide my credentials, as before. And now I will choose to keep the link running after the failover. And once the wizard is finished, we will have SQL MI become the primary, which uh, gives us the following configuration. So this is also something we can keep indefinitely. Uh, if we like to have uh, SQL Server be the secondary, you can do this. But you can also drop the link and recreate it later as needed. And recreating the link gives you some very powerful capabilities, such as you can easily test your business continuity plans. You can meet your compliance requirements, uh, things like this. And now, 
uh, we're very close to actually being able to modernize our application with just a couple of seconds. It's really easy to make a SQL MI data available to use in Microsoft Fabric. Uh, let's go back to SQL Server Management Studio. I'm connected to my SQL Managed Instance. And what I'll do is I'll create an external table called Fabric Sales with a location on the Microsoft Fabric One Lake as a select from our sales table. This will export the data from SQL MI into Microsoft Fabric. We're going to flip the fabric now, and I'm going to create a very simple notebook here. We just want to connect the dots, nothing too fancy. New notebook. I have some sample code here, and all I need to do is paste the path to the file with my managed instance data. There we go. And I can now run the notebook. And once this is completed, I will have, there we go, uh, I will have my SQL MI data available to use in fabric, and I can keep working on it, building additional insights. Uh, but this shows you, even though it's a very simple demo, how easy it is to connect your data and modernize your applications after you're running in Manage Instance. And you can build super powerful solutions this way. Uh, trust me, I know, because many of our Microsoft internal teams and some of our partners are already doing so full steam. So back to where we started, uh, we want to wrap up our journey. Uh, you've seen how easy it is to both evaluate but also modernize our applications using the power uh, of Azure Cloud. You can easily evaluate SQL MI thanks to Start, Stop, and Freemium. You can optimize your performance and meet your high availability goals with a click of a button. You can migrate and stay flexible with the link feature, and you can also modernize very easily thanks to Microsoft Azure and Fabric. Thank you. That's all I have. Back to you, Sam. Thanks, Vladimir. So as you can see, uh, it is super, super easy to migrate. And again, you can fully modernize your applications in the cloud. Um, and, and I strongly believe that Azure SQL provides you the best place for all your data. Fully manage operational database and every purpose with deep integration with the rest of the Azure ecosystem. Let's take another example of American Airline. They migrated their customer hub app that had 10 terabytes of data and had a very, very strong requirements around their latency for their transactions. So now we want to switch gears and talk about more cloud-native applications. And I know Sirish is really excited to talk about the cloud databases and how you can use them to build cloud-native applications. So let me invite back uh, Sirish to the stage. And thank you very much. Well, thank you, Asad, and thank you, Vladimir. Thank you for those cool SQL Server, Azure Arc, Azure SQL Database announcements. And now, I want to talk about something equally cool, intelligent applications. Intelligent applications are those that include AI features, such as recommenders, natural language processing, and semantic search, and whatnot. I'm pretty sure all of you have been working on some AI app as we speak today. How many of you are building an AI app today? If you're, an, I'm pretty sure you're thinking about it. I guarantee that. <laughs> so, you know, the cool thing, I want to begin by telling you something really interesting. There are going to be 500 million new applications that are going to be built in the next five years. This is really widely established fact. Now, most of these applications are going to do something or the other with data. Well, you really cannot have AI with data. If AI is the last mile, data has to be the first mile. Many of these applications are going to use artificial intelligence to derive their own intelligence from business data, their own business data. Copilots are going to be used significantly to increase productivity. Many of them are going to use these tools to self-tune, self-heal, self-govern, and whatnot. And the cool thing is that Azure databases are well poised to help you build these diverse scenarios across all these intelligent application requirements. And we're going to see how. Let's start with Azure SQL Database and establish why Azure SQL Database is one of the best databases for you to build intelligent applications right here. Well, for one, Azure SQL Database is built on the foundations of SQL Server. Remember, 30 years of battle-tested security and reliability built in. We've taken that and ported it to build a modern built-for-cloud service that's fast, flexible, and secure. It provides you flexible compute options across auto scale and serverless and ML tuning built in so you get optimized price performance guarantees. 
Azure SQL Database's seamless cloud experience basically eliminates complexity because, as you know, it has support for various types and data across models such as graphs, JSON, et cetera, all in one place. So you can focus building your applications, which are like tuning your AI models and whatnot. Plus, you can grow your application as your size needs grow because of the flexibility of SQL Database Hyperscale. SQL Database Hyperscale offers you amazing scale up of compute, auto scale for read replicas, and storage up to 100 terabytes. And all the while enjoying the built-in control, security layers and threat detection, et cetera, so your data is secure and highly available. You're, you can have business continuity in the face of regional disaster recovery, regional disasters, with an SLA of four, nine and a half. Now that is world class. So, you know, while we're looking into it, I want to go back to hyperscale just for a moment though, because I have a big announcement there. Starting today, we're basically offering, we are announcing Azure SQL Database Hyperscale is going to be offered at the same price, same price, as a commercial open source database. <laughs> Same price as a commercial open source database. And this is a game changer. You could build any scalable applications, any throughput needs, I.O. needs, storage needs, et cetera, and save up to 35% of compute bill. And this is going to be generally available in, in uh, mid-December. But this is a game changer. We won't have any IP costs, et cetera. It's the same price as a commercial open source database, effectively. Now, of course. Past summits would not be past summits without Bob and Connor show. So we want to bring Bob and Connor here to talk about how they're going to show the flexibility of SQL database hyperscale. So Bob and Connor, welcome. Sharish, <laughs> hey man, hey. good to see you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Right. Welcome to your Thank first you. past keynote. Thank you. Um, we we were told that you like cricket, and in Texas, where we're from, we were told uh, you know crickets are these little bugs. So we thought, okay, we'll find something for you nice to give you a welcome gift. So we got you the Seattle cricket jersey with uh, your name you. on it. Thirty years of SQL. <laughs> Thirty years of Thanks SQL. Thanks a lot. Yeah, Thank you, you so much. Yeah, you know, this, yeah. is, this is really cool. Thanks yeah. so much. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Connor. Yeah. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Connor, uh, you know we're always doing some cool SQL stuff at this event, as you know. I've heard. But I have some problems to solve as well I need your help on? That's why I'm here. We have a lot of stuff to share. Let's just get into it, right? So first of all, Connor, SQL Azure has been your bailiwick for so long. Did you know we have this free tier? I heard Look at that. I heard that we free. were Develop for free for awesome. Azure SQL yeah. for the lifetime of your subscription. Yeah. That's amazing. But I need your help. OK. Uh, hyperscale, which is great. But look here. It's like $2,400 for 12 cores. That's OK, but i got to get under 2000 bucks. So I'm not really sure what to do uh, you, to how to do that. There is this new pricing yeah, thing. Yeah, you should look up there at that little you know, okay. colored section that Maybe says, I should click on it. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what, what if I click Lower on it? Lower pricing do? for hyperscale. What happens here? Um, whoa, hey, 1600 bucks. OK, that's not bad. I got, I, I got my goal. I saved a lot of money just by going to hyperscale. That's pretty that, cool. That's the new pricing model. That's the new pricing model. Yep. Awesome, awesome. But Connor, here's the problem, though. I've got like a trillion rows in a hyperscale. I need to prove this thing actually really works. But it's slow, man. I don't know what to do. Well, I've been working ahead of you as usual, uh, but I've got Wait, some. Wait, those are those tabs are for? Y yeah, the tabs are there. We'll get to those. So okay. just try this first. So you show. Okay, them what I'm they gonna did. do it. I'm gonna do it. Let me look down here. So look down here. It's oh, it's a trillion rows. It's 19 minutes. 19 minutes to Let go scan scroll. a trillion See that? rows. Yeah, I ain't gonna work, Connor. I, I've got something for you, Bob. I go to the other tab. Yep. Yeah, there's a couple more tabs here. Okay. Try this. Trust one. Connor. Give me a. What is this? 14 seconds. 14 seconds. What the heck? What, wait a minute, though. Um, we have I, another one. We got only partition. I have by, partitions. That's like 30 billion rows. Yeah, take one, what one is that like? Going to be eight seconds? That. Let me see. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm going to run it this time, and I'm going to do a plan this time, actually. So let me go over here, pick the plan, and run it, because I want to see what you're doing behind the scenes here. So less than a second. What's going on, Connor? What's in the plan? Yeah, so this is batch mode working on hyperscale. I want to make sure that you guys know that we've been making a ton of investments in improving batch mode from what was there in the original SQL Server version. So every month when you go get the next version of SQL Azure or Fabric DW or the next version of SQL Server, you're going to get all of the various enhancements that we've been doing from vector instructions to key improvements in the way that we design the operators. So all you have to do is build your application on, on any of our SQL platforms and you're going to get the benefits that we're showing and you. And trust Connor. And you should trust Connor. Connor. Yeah, yes, exactly. Okay, that's the other thing okay trillion rows, that's pretty good, but I got another problem, Connor. 
Uh, okay. I mean, are you, is it okay if uh, I... Yeah, yeah, let's go to your next problem. Okay, I'm, Bob, I mean, you're solving problems you're, you're, for me. You're nothing but problems, you, Bob, and I'm I nothing, am nothing but, but problems. Um, why I'm here. Do, you, do you recognize this? Uh, yes. I'm going to start a transaction, and I'm going to add a column to a table. Okay. Everybody in the room knows what's going to happen here. Schema I go, lock. I start a transaction, I run my select statement, and I'm blocked. Schema, Schema lock. modification blocked. Yeah. This is terrible. I don't know what to do now. I, I have another tab for you, Bob. Well, wait a minute, though. Uh, what are you saying? There's like another server here? Yeah, yeah, there's another server. Uh, check the other SSMS. Okay, wait, let me go in here. You've got another server connected. What's this it's the same metadata it's the same, server? Same, yeah, same repo. Just try but it. I'm not going to, it's it. not going to matter. Try it. Okay, add the column. Go do it. Fine. That works. All right, go run the select. Another transaction. It's going to get blocked. It's not blocked. Wait a minute, what? And I don't see the column. Right, it's not there yet. So what do I do now? Go oh, back wait, and go back over here? Yeah, go back and commit the original transaction. Yeah. And then what? And then go run the query again. And run it again. So what am I going to see? What is going? Wait, you've solved the schema modification lock for all time? OK, that's pretty good. <clears throat> Connor, that, that's not bad. That's not a mic drop moment. That makes sense. I agree. That's actually pretty good. So yeah, I know. It's been a great show, all right? So you got anything else, Bob? No, I, I do. Uh, do you know Davide Mari? I know Davide well. OK, yeah. So I want to do AI. OK. This is a really like a meat and potatoes SQL conference, Bob. Connor, AI is the new meat and potatoes. Uh, if you say so. OK, let me show you. Look what Adavide built. He built me a chat bot okay. on top of my data. We took our data and we indexed it with Azure and Cognitive Search, like in these trillion row table with these reviews, right? You can see it here. And so based on that, I can start answering questions. Let me pull across here. I can do like sentiment reviews. So let me go paste this in uh, and see what it looks like. And then now I can do this like interactive chat session with my actual data in Azure SQL database. And it's going to come back and give me kind of a really interesting review about a negative review. I can even get the details of the citation of the review. Mm -hmm. Well, this is nice. That's pretty cool. But I want to do more. Like I would like to get kind of a more like a mixed sentiment. Like let me go see over here. Yeah, how do I improve the actual reviews? Or how do I improve my product based on reviews? Let me type that in. This is a little harder. Can you imagine trying to go through the entire database and doing a search to figure this information out? But because we've actually got OpenAI to help us with our data, I can get more information, not just the negative review, but if you look here, I can get like improvements. This would be very difficult to do if you tried to do this just do searching on your database. You know, Bob, this is all great and all, but yeah. I haven't heard the word SQL. Well, I get it, and I asked Davide that, like, what's the SQL part of this? So check this out here. Let me go over to this machine. We have actually built a stored procedure to do the same thing. Ah. Yeah, so I've got the stored procedure. I can feed in the procedure the same question like I'm doing the chat session. It's going to come back, if you look here, with not just the answer, but those same citations. And so I'm like, Davide, like, how are you doing this? Well, I go over here to this tab, and I can go here at the top, and I can see that I actually see the code of the procedure. Let me see. Let me go up above here. And yeah, look at this. We're using the new REST API integration. So we're actually able to go use REST APIs with Agnet of Cognitive Search, tell the AI chat assistant how to behave, and then use this new internal stored procedure to interact with OpenAI to actually give us the answer. That's pretty neat. So yeah. now you can build SQL applications that talk, call out to ACS, get what you need, and continue using business logic in T-SQL. All secured inside the engine. Awesome. That's not bad. You have to admit, that's actually pretty good. Yep, pretty cool. I don't know, Sharish, what do you think, man? You should come see this. What do you think, dude? This is pretty good stuff. Sharish, what do you think? Great demo. SQL does it all. <laughs> yeah, I SQL know. absolutely does it all. Was, was that, that was a great demo, Bob and Connor. Thank you so very Thanks. much. Thank you, Sharif. <laughs> See you later. Thank you. OK, well, I really don't think I can top this. <laughs> I don't think I can top what Bob and Connor showed, but I do want to talk about uh, something uh, about a customer scenario, uh, a European energy company, E.ON, and how they've embraced SQL databases. So to serve the needs of their million plus customers, E.ON has embraced SQL database back in 2017 and immediately saw data accessibility improvements. But as time went by, E.ON saw a problem. They've started noticing backend errors because their storage was running out of space effectively and thereby impacting, negatively impacting their uh, analysis and their customer experience. And this is when E.ON turned to Azure SQL database hyperscale and completely eliminated all the storage errors. Don't have to worry about the scale anymore. As, as the app grows, as their business grows, we absolutely scale along with them. And they can still be centered in the cloud. And that's the beautiful thing about uh, Eon's story and how the flexibility of Azure SQL Database Hyperscale comes along. With the announcement that we made, we hope to see you all build many more applications on SQL Database Hyperscale. 
Next up, I want to talk about another database that's equally cool for building intelligent applications. And again, this is one that's very close to my heart. You know, remember I was dev number zero for Cosmos DB. Uh, Cosmos DB is great for fast, flexible applications because it has support for semi-structured data. It's first-class ability to handle semi-structured data. Makes it great so that you can build Mo spend most of your time on building AI apps and less time on schema management, index management, and so on. And because it's a NoSQL database, it has support for the flexibility of data types, right? And you, you could do that with, without, with a, a very leading world-class SLA latency of single-digit millisecond latency for reads and writes across the globe. And this is an industry first, right? For interactive intelligent apps, that have highly variable traffic, Cosmos DB offers a great range of options with superior elasticity. Imagine if your app has spiky traffic or occasional traffic, you could use serverless. If you have an app that basically has a variable traffic but requires a lot of performance need requirements, you could go with auto scale. That kind of brings me to my next big announcement here. And starting today, all new Azure Cosmos DB accounts will be able to use our public preview feature of dynamic scaling per partition and per region. And this is, this is super important. You know, you have many, many of you have built applications perhaps on Cosmos DB, and the expectation to be efficient with the cost management is that all these apps need to be uniform across the partitions. Let's say you have 100 partitions. They all need to be uniform. If they are not, you basically charge to the highest partition, multiplied by 100 effectively. And if you have regions, if regions have heterogeneous traffic, you're basically built by the highest usage region. Now with this feature, we've done all the work that's required to do the resource governance in a way so that you as a customer can build and bring applications that don't have to worry about this indifference in terms of the uh, uniformity of traffic. Now, this is huge, it really can help you bring these non-uniform applications and, and see a lot of sa uh, savings. Well, so what's it like to use Cosmos DB to build these generative AI applications? Now, KPMG Australia has a, has a case study which exactly answers that question. KimChat is a generative AI app that has chat GPT-like capabilities, which was rolled out to KPMG employees and their clients alike, which is built on Azure Cosmos DB, Mongo, vCore, and Azure OpenAI. Now, with this, KPMG employees can be assured, can be rest assured that they're, they're building on AI tech without their client data leaving the premises of KPMG environment, and it is dealt with securely, right? KPMG has even taken a step further out. They are rolling this feature out to their own customers so that they can build a custom version of this Kim chat, right? And enable generative AI on their own business data. So that's a fantastic story, and we've seen about Azure databases across both SQL and Cosmos DB and how they're great. Now I want to turn attention towards open source databases. Azure databases are equally committed to Postgres and MySQL, and this is where you know, we have amazing announcements here. They're both awesome for intelligent applications too. We have support for community editions of MySQL and Postgres, and we basically take care of the, the management of database, database infrastructure, et cetera. You know, when we take care of the daily administrative tasks, you can go, of course, focus on business agility and innovation. Both of these databases have awesome performance tuning built in. So you could, you could, again, go build intelligent applications. You don't have to worry about the optimizations. Just have to execute the performance recommendations directly served to your database. Both of these databases have cost-effective options, have a great high availability of four nines SLA with single zone and uh, zone ridden HA, et cetera. So let's look at a few of the announcements in this space. The first one, scale and performance across the board on Azure Database for Postgres. And I'm super excited about these announcements. These are some of the uh, groundbreaking ones, in my opinion. They provide, uh, uh, these updates basically tackle the storage and compute capabilities so you can bring tier one applications. The first one is PV2. This is basically talking about how we are improving our storage infrastructure. We call this premium SSD v2. These are managed disk capabilities in Azure. With this, you get sub millisecond latency guarantees. Let me say it again, sub-millisecond guarantees, up to 64 terabytes of storage, and 80,000 IOPS per instance. These are really, really leading across the industry effectively. And 
Effectively, this means that you can bring, again, your tier one Postgres enterprise applications to Azure and not worry about the throughput scale and uh, HA kind of guarantees. Now generally available near zero downtime scaling. Now, when you are basically having, again, the same thing about variable traffic, if you want to adjust your resources, you can do that without having to worry about application downtime anymore. In fact, the numbers that I saw was going down from 10 minutes to like a few seconds of downtime effectively. IOPS scaling helps you scale your needs for IOPS from anywhere to up to 20K in the current version, 80,000 IOPS with the new version that I just announced with the first one, PV2. You could use this for scenarios such as loading data, migrating data, et cetera, and then scale it down when you don't need it. In conjunction with all these things, we believe that if you want to build a tier one Postgres application, Azure databases are the right place for you. And same thing goes for Azure database for MySQL business critical tier. It also has amazing performance gains, which I'm going to talk about it in a bit. These gains are awesome for applications that have transactional and some of the analytical characteristics. We have introduced a feature called accelerated logs, where basically put the logs on, uh, on a fast managed disk while the data uh, is stored in a premium files effect effectively. With this, you can see up to 100% gains in your performance. And to show that, we actually have some data uh, that talks to these enhancements. A third-party benchmark, uh, principal technologies have run this benchmark and have shown that, and we're going to be publishing it soon, that we are 50% faster than AWS Relational Database Service for MySQL, up to 2.26 times faster than GCP's Cloud SQL for MySQL. Super proud about these achievements that my team has, has done. Once again, Azure Databases for Postgres MySQL is really the best place for you to run your open source workloads as well. Now, to talk about this, I want to talk about a customer scenario, SGS. SGS has used Microsoft Azure Cloud Services. It's a world-class, renowned testing, certification, inspection company. They have built an innovative, device, uh, innovative technology to test up to 315 uh, wind turbine devices in the Three Gorges Dam uh, wind farm uh, in, in China uh, to basically deliver continual real-time oil conditions to the wind farm operators. Now, for its online diagnostic service, SGS uses Azure Cosmos DB to handle their real-time data, IoT data coming in, and basically enable some of the sensitive things like alarms. It uses Azure Database for MySQL to handle business information such as sensor information, user accounts, and whatnot. With these technologies in place, SGS has exactly what they need to deliver to established wind farm operators. They have efficient, digitally-driven equipment that all the wind farm operators require. They want to have a continual real-time oil conditions, and we've delivered it beautifully. Now, SGS is, is, is a great story, but it is not, it's not just about databases. It's also about business analytics. And here, I want to talk about Microsoft Fabric. It is a product, a key product, that really is essential for you to build intelligent applications. Now, what is Fabric? Fabric is all-in-one all built-in enterprise analytic solution that helps you build everything from moving data to data science, analytics, reporting, intelligence, et cetera. The way it does is by bringing all services such as Azure Data Factory, Synapse, Power BI, all in one place. That's right, everything that you need for analytics, all combined in one simple, cohesive, unified, collaborative workspace. With these enhanced pipelines, we take advantage of this collaborative workspace for you to go build data estates that range across your needs from security models to CI, CD, reporting, and governance. And because we've centered all this on open, open data formats, you can get started really quickly with lake-centric tools that you're probably aware of already and you're probably used to already. Now, if you're thinking about picturing fabric it's best to start with thinking about Microsoft 365. That's the right parallel. Microsoft 365 gives you Word to author documents, PowerPoint to basically go present your slides. Similarly, Fabric has seven analytical workloads as of today, which serves the needs of specific persona, specific use cases. Microsoft 365 has co-pilots, and so does Fabric. Microsoft 365, all the workloads in that store the data in OneDrive. 
you're all used to it. I'm sure you have your SharePoints, et cetera. They all store the data in one drive. Same story, similar story. <laughs> Fabric workloads all st store their data in what we call as one lake. So what's one lake? One lake is Fabric's SaaS enterprise grade multi-cloud data lake that is inbuilt, highly available, ready to go in all of your tenants. And the best thing about Fabric, in my opinion, is that it simplifies your business model. No matter what you're doing, data pipelines, data science, whatever you're trying to do, you could dip into the same resource pools and share them across your tenants efficiently. That's really how you should picture Fabric as. Now, to underscore Fabric, I want to introduce another use case, a quick use case about how Milliman is using Fabric and how they've gotten really a great benefits out of this. Now, Milliman is a worldwide financial institution that works with its insurance industry clients to manage emerging risks and to advance their financial growth. Milliman wanted to give its users access to their actuarial software and their self-serving analytics. So they embarked on building their own data platform. Soon they realized that it was a little too far off from their expertise of building actuarial software. And that's when they turned to Microsoft Fabric. Microsoft Fabric's unified infrastructure. And further, its ability to lead with Power BI front and center made Milliman comfortable. They basically took a considered step-by-step -step approach to then making Fabric instead as their data platform. Now they're using Fabric as their data platform. We're delivering fast, expedited access. Azure Data Factory can mount existing data pipelines. All the services are integrated into one leg storage. We have robust analytics. We have great reporting and intelligence, of course. All this makes Milliman super successful. In fact, they see their vision of Fabric and AI converging as they take, take steps further. So that's really, uh, again, you know, a great story about uh, uh, all, all, all the things that we've talked about, uh, intelligent applications. Now, I want to move the gears a little bit further. I want to talk about what's new in terms of announcing uh, what we are doing towards vector search in particular. Now, there's a lot going on in AI, and I want to touch upon uh, vector search and semantic search abilities, et cetera, in, in, uh, in our databases. And I have two big things that I want to talk about in that space. Now, I shared how Azure databases address the unique data challenges, requirements of building intelligent applications. The good news is that we are equally ready to help you build AI-ready apps. They can help you address the unpredictable traffic requirements from customers all over the world, now, wherever they are. They all want fast, always-on <laughs> access. When you are trying to build AI-ready apps, you basically have to handle data types across the board, images, pictures, documents, IoT files, and whatnot. You can really build ARD apps on any of our Azure databases. For instance, if you want to build a retrieval augment generation, you probably all heard about RAG, retrieval augment generation patterns. You could build that natively inside SQL Server, inside Azure SQL, in conjunction with Azure Cognitive Search and Azure OpenAI. When you do that, you basically leverage and make sure that your LLM apps get the most relevant semantically interpreted search results. And that's a game changer for your AI apps. And to avoid time-consuming setup administration and troubleshooting tasks, we have married Azure databases with AI really closely. Here, once again, I want to call upon Bob Ward and Anna Hoffman to, uh, to give us a demonstration of that. Bob and Anna, welcome. Thanks, Chris. Okay, Anna, we are back again at the past summit. Uh, I think last year we were here, we had a little competition. Pretty sure I won. You? Yeah. I don't think so. Oh, no, I think so. Anyone remember? Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. me. No, oh, what? So. Yeah. Okay, all right. It's okay. Well, whatever, all right. It's all right. You want to do another competition? About what? SQL. You know SQL, right? Anna, I've written four books. Yes, I know SQL, of course. OK, all right. Let's so do it. You don't mind, then, if I use a little co-pilot? A co-pilot? A co <laughs> Bring it. Yeah, let's see that. OK, all right. Okay. So we're going to do a competition. What's this for? Three rounds. I've got my easy button. Now, okay. whoever hits the easy button first for each round wins, wins that round. It's easy. Well, got if it. you've got it solved. OK, let's go. OK, so, so let me show you this setup here. OK, what do I got? 
Okay, so I know it's a little small on your page because I want folks to be able to see both both of our screens. Okay. On okay. the right, that's that's your VM. I got okay. Azure Data Studio set up. We of have course, two Azure Data Studio. Okay. Yeah, Azure fine. SQL databases. Okay. You're going to use today. Okay. For the first problem, you're okay. going to use the first database. Okay. All right. Got All right. It. I'm going to okay. use the portal. Okay. All right. Okay. So the first problem is developers have reported the database is performing slowly. Performance. It's my belly wick. Got it. Let's you do ready? it. I'm ready. Let's go. Let's okay. go. Okay. Ready? Okay. Okay. Go. Okay. Let me connect over here. All DMVs, baby. I know it all day long. All right. Let me go over clear. Uh, compare new query. Uh, what is it? It's uh, using IntelliSense. Uh, it's it's resource stats. DS DMDB. That's where I'm going to start. DMDB uh, resource uh, resource stats. I'm going to hit here. It was easy. I got it. What? What'd you do over here? What is this? Yeah. Okay. So what you see is uh, the copilot figured out that the CPU usage was high. It also found two queries that I could fix to make it perform a little bit better. I I could have done that. You would have gotten there. I, I would have gotten there. Yeah, I got yeah. It. yeah, yeah. You know what? It also says, refer to free training by SQL expert Bob Ward. <laughs> huh. It's okay. It's okay. Hoffman. Okay. It's okay. All right. Okay. You ready Hoffman. for problem two? Bring it. Let's try problem two. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, what are we going to do? Okay, so for problem two, okay. some folks have been reporting that they can't connect to the database. Okay, that's okay. easy, no problem. Now, Gosh. for this one, yeah. you're okay. going to use okay. the second Azure SQL the database. The one that's, that's red there. The one that's red. Could be down. Okay, you ready? Uh, yeah, let's go. Yeah, I got right. it. I got it. Okay, I'm just going to connect first. If I can connect, wait a minute, some can't, some, some can't do it. Okay, um, uh, event, log, event log, event log, event log. Um, let's go here. From, I can't type. Come on, Bob. Um, it, it's a vet log, isn't it? That was easy. Come on. Got it. What is going on here? What, 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 what does it say? OK, so what it says is it says the, the copilot found, like, did some basic checks and then said seven connections were blocked by the firewall rule. Firewall. And then said, hey, you can open the firewall settings and you know, figure out I, how to get folks. I would have gotten there. You would have gotten there? Yeah. Um, Bob, do you like baseball? <laughs> do I like baseball? The Rangers won the World Series. Of course I like baseball. That's two strikes. Ah! Hoffman. OK, all right, all right. Give me another chance. Okay. Another chance. Give me a chance. Yeah. All right, last problem. OK, what do we got? OK, so let me pull up the last problem. Now, this problem three yeah. says, find the most recent orders for customers who have sales oh, over Oh, this is a SQL problem. Yeah, OK, SQL we're doing problem. a SQL. OK, I know it's sick. We got it. OK, no okay. problem. Got it. Okay, okay, so I'm gonna copy this query over here. What are you um, doing? But I don't, I don't want it to seem like I'm cheating. Yeah, it looks like um, you're cheating. So what I'm gonna do is, by the way, for this one, you're gonna use the first Azure SQL the first database server. again. Okay, I'm not writing, I'm writing a query based, but I gotta see the problem. Yeah. So what I did is in the file explorer. Okay. Uh, down there at the bottom. Okay. You see that problem three? Oh, I got a markdown. Okay. Yep. Okay, got the problem. Okay, got I'm just, it. Just I don't want you to think I'm cheating. Well, yeah, kind of seems like that way. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. Okay, you ready? I'm, re I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. All right. I can already tell. This is, a, this is CTE. It's got to be. Um, okay, so with, um, I can use IntelliSense here, right? With customers as, um, let me go, so select, um, okay. Um, but, but I've got to know which table I'm doing. Select star from, um, let me go that here. Come on, what is going on here? There's no way you did that. Yeah. Not for that. Yeah, so Copilot actually has natural language to SQL capabilities. So I just kind of pasted in what we were trying to do. It didn't work, though. Yeah, I wrote this CTE. You were talking about that, right? I, yeah, it was CTE. Yeah. yeah. I, I, would have, I, would, I would have done that. I would have gotten there. Yeah. yeah. You would have gotten there. And yeah. by, by the way, Bob, there's a GitHub Copilot in Azure Data Studio. Could have you could told have been me that, that before we got on stage. That would have helped me. So yeah, <laughs> thanks a lot. That wasn't bad. You, you did OK. You did OK. It, yeah. I did OK. I won all three rounds with Copilot. <laughs> Maybe so. I don't know. I, I guess. I, Sharish, man, help me out here. Yeah. Come on. I, I think I, I don't definitely know what to do. won. I don't think so. Um, Sharish, it turns out. Oh, that was amazing. Yeah. That was super awesome. Thank yeah. you for showing us. Yeah, but hey, man. It doesn't matter how many books on SQL you write. You can all benefit oh, from a co-pilot. That oh. is so true. That oh is so gosh. true. Words of wisdom. <laughs> Thank you. Hoffman, you got lucky. I want a rematch, man. <laughs> that, that was not fair. All right. Well, so that was that was super super cool, and uh, you know, really thank you, Bob and uh, Anna. And now I'm delighted to announce uh, something more about uh, related to AI for Azure Cosmos DB. 
You all might have heard about Azure Cosmos DB for Mongo vCore. And this is our next generation of our Mongo API. We love Mongo APIs. And we are announcing GA of Mongo vCore. And this is going to be amazing in terms of performance capabilities and the compatibility with Mongo vCore. We are super excited about this. Along with that, we also have vector search in Mongo vCore. So as you all know, vector search is, of course, one of the most happening things. And there's, there's a lot that you could do with vector searches. You could have not just search by equality, predicates, and whatnot that we are so used to, but you could search by meaning. You can search by intent. Now, to do that, you typically have to move the data from your operational databases into another vector DB or some other system, and then go figure out how to manage, synchronize, et cetera. With our solutions, you could store your data, index, query, on transactional data, live, on the data, and not have to care about all the tax to go with another alternative capability. It's all built in. So today, we are announcing GA of of vector search in Azure Cosmos DB's Mongo API. Now, integrating vector search capabilities unlocks full potential of your data when you are building on top of OpenAI apps or even custom apps. And why so? Because that leverages the vector embeddings and helps you build these apps really well. Recommendations, semantic search, and whatnot. My next announcement is equally exciting when you think about what Microsoft has been doing across the space. Now available in preview, Microsoft Copilot for Azure will let you write natural language queries against Cosmos DB so that you can spend less time building your queries against a NoSQL database and more time being productive and focusing on your AI apps. So that's about Azure Cosmos DB. The other big thing that I want to announce here is about Azure Co databases for Postgres extension for Azure AI. Now, as I said, we believe we are the best place to run your OSS APIs. And Postgres community is on fire. They are doing all kinds of things for, for vector search. There's a very popular extension called PG Vector, and we are involved in it. In addition to that, we have invested in this extension so that you could call the embeddings natively from within the Postgres SQL database and basically get all these embeddings, store, index, query. Once again, you don't have to get out of your app. You don't have to go do a number of things across the board. It's all there as one built-in function, effectively, to go build these embeddings and then go on to build generative AI apps and PostgreSQL. And to show that, I'm going to call upon Sage. Claire Giordano is going to demonstrate how we are using this extension to build generative AI apps in PostgreSQL. Welcome, Claire. Awesome. Hello. Today I'm going to show you, <clears throat> if my voice will work, how you can use Azure OpenAI to create true semantic search experiences directly in Azure Database for Postgres. And in today's demo, I'm a developer whose job it is to improve the relevance of search results for a recipe website. I'm just going to move this a little bit so I can see both screens. OK, let's dive in. All right, am I sharing? I will be. All right, <clears throat> here we go. You can see my recipes table on the left. It is three columns, title, ingredients, and directions. And if I run a select query with a like clause, I'm gonna highlight that query for you. Um, I, will, I can search for recipes with avocado in the title. And the results show on the bottom, and I'm getting, I'm seeing five results, which is OK. But I could also run this second query to search for avocado in the title or ingredients. And on the bottom, you see the results are much better. 24 recipes match. But what if my users really want high protein recipes? When I search for high protein with the like clause, in the bottom left, you can see, once I run this, that I get zero results. Um, so what if we look at full text search instead? Let's try that. So I'm altering the table, and I'm adding a column called text search. And I'm going to run that to show you that after the text search column is added, I can look for avocado, and I get 25 results. So now let's run the full text search query to look for high protein recipes. And it's no good. I get zero results. 
So pattern matching and full text search do not give me semantic search. We need something else. Let's apply Azure OpenAI to the problem and use the new Azure AI extension that Sharish just mentioned. All right, so I've already installed the Azure AI and PG Vector extensions to get it all set up. And the output of this query that I'm highlighting will show you on the bottom that they're both installed. Now, Azure AI integrates Azure Database for Postgres with Azure OpenAI. And also, Azure AI works with and is complementary to the open source PG Vector extension that enables you to store embeddings in Postgres. So let's go ahead and add a new vector column. Let's call it Recipe Embedding. It's a computed column that will automatically generate an embedding using Azure AI every time I insert a row, and the embedding will be stored in this new column. Now, before we run any queries, I want to create an index. So to do that, let's use Create Index on the Recipes table using HNSW, which is an index type specific to vectors. And once that's done, I can insert a new recipe for oatmeal breakfast bars. And when I query for oatmeal breakfast bars, you can see at the bottom, I'll put a red box on it, there's a vector embedding, yay. So now we can search for high protein recipes again. I'll run a select query using Azure AI, and you can see at the bottom that the search results are dramatically better. Now let's step back and look at that query I just ran. Azure AI generated an embedding for high protein recipes and compared it to the recipe embeddings that are already stored in the table. And as you can see at the bottom, there are the oatmeal breakfast bars, even though it doesn't have high protein anywhere in the recipe. Before, when we searched for high protein recipes with the like clause and full text search in Postgres, I got zero rows. But now the top 10 results are all relevant high protein recipes. All right, I have something else I want to show you. So we just saw the new Azure AI extension, Create Embeddings. But Azure AI also allows interaction with Azure AI language service to do things like sentiment analysis. So let's do that on some recipe reviews. In this query I'm going to run, I'll invoke Azure AI language and pass it what's called the review text and see what people are saying about oatmeal breakfast bars. And at the bottom, you can see the query results. Uh, the first one was positive, the second one was negative, the third one was neutral, but that's not all you can do. Another thing that's possible with Postgres and Azure AI language is to detect what language something is. So let me show you. I'm gonna run this highlighted select query to see what language this string is, and hey, look, it's Portuguese. Incredible. The third thing I want to show you is this feature for PII redaction. So let me get there. Imagine if my users submit personal data on the website. I can use Azure AI and run this query I'm highlighting and call the recognize PII entities function. And you can see the output at the bottom. It redacted my teammate Denzel's company name and email address. It's perfect. It's an amazing solution for the redaction of PII. So the new Azure AI extension of Postgres in combination with PG Vector provides these simple integrations to Azure OpenAI and Azure AI language. And it gives you amazing features to empower your developers to build an entirely new class of applications entirely on Postgres. Thank you very much, y'all are great. Back to you, Sharish. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Well, I really like what you did there. Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, so for many, this whole aspect and idea of building AI ready applications with Azure databases may sound futuristic. But for us, it's here, it's already there. So we've covered building AI apps with Azure databases. But what else are we thinking? How are we thinking about evolution of databases? How are we thinking about Azure databases and general databases all up? Let's turn our eye to the horizon for a moment. We believe that databases of the future have to, have to play and interoperate with a shared application that has both transactional and analytical requirement. 
It needs to have robust security, governance, and compliance requirement. And this streamlined database will have to be automatic and intelligence. It has to be developer friendly. It has to be cost effective by default, all the while being mission critical ready. So when I say mission, when I say automatic and intelligence, I effectively are talk, I'm effectively talking about a feature like intelligent query processing that you're used to in SQL. It has complete advanced index management, query processing, with none, if any, customer inputs. Because we run our services at a massive scale, we get a tons of feedback loops. We keep getting better based on these feedbacks. We're investing in that. And these will be delivered to your services without you knowing about it. Our future database has to be developer friendly. Developers has to spend less time in integrating services, plumbing code, and following complex steps. A database of the future will have to enable developers to build applications that are rooted in the modern practices. Microservices, many databases, interoperations, et cetera, et cetera. The database of the future has to be cost effective by default. What it means is that it needs to be simpler for you to understand and govern your costs. And the root of this vision is basically about having programs like autoscale and serverless, meaning the billing should be consumption oriented so that you can take all the efficiencies and you really pay only for what you've used. And naturally, everything needs to tie up by being mission critical ready. High availability, four nines, five nines SLAs, data needs should be highly, highly available, integral, accessible. You have to have these databases embedded in advanced identity management, threat protection, things like automatic encryptions, isolation promises, et cetera. These are the certain things that you expect. And now, of course, because of Fabric, because of all the innovations that we've shown today a little bit, we believe that this future is within our grasp. So that's really what we think about database of the future. Now, yeah, now that we're back from the future, I want to turn back to the theme of this session, growth. In this keynote, I've showed you how SQL Server and Azure databases can turn and help your applications achieve limitless growth and make AI an integral part of your data estate in a cost-effective way. I can do this knowing that Microsoft has got your back with our secure, trusted, and provable database solutions. But as I mentioned again, Microsoft's data solutions are one part of the equation. Community is, is equally important, building connections so you can grow your skills, collaborate and innovate with the courage and encouragement is super important. So this was my first presentation at PASS this time. It was definitely not my first time here at PASS. Like many of you, I have attended PASS for several years. I was here, I was sitting in the audience. Um, in my own eyes, I've seen the community grow and flourish because how we continue to give to our community. So this, it's been an honor for me. Thank you so much uh, for letting me share what Microsoft's vision is, how we intend to help you grow your skills and make the best out of what the future holds with the data and AI technologies. Thank you once again for joining my team. I really hope you have the rest of a wonderful conference. Thank you.